Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. I'm Siobhan Beckford and in this video, I will be discussing some essential things you will need to start your photography journey. So without any further ado, let me dive right into this video, Siobhan Beckford style. Yes guys, now the first thing I would recommend for anyone wanting to start their photography journey is a camera. Now, currently in 2022 and going on in the future, if anyone asks me for a recommendation, I will always recommend a mirrorless camera because DSLR are slowly going out of style and mirrorless are taking over. Now, in my hand, I currently have the Sony A6100. So the Sony A6100 is an APS-C crop sensor mirrorless camera from Sony. The reason I would recommend a camera like this is to allow you to stick to a budget in which you can get a camera for below a thousand dollars with a lens included. Now as it relates to lens when you're getting your first camera try to get a zoom lens and a wide angle zoom lens to be exact something like around a 14 millimeter to 45 millimeter 18 to 55 millimeter or a 20 to 60 millimeter and even though i'm recommending the sony a6100 you're not limited to getting the sony a6100 because i personally am a lumix user and i started out with a nikon d3500 so you're free to choose whichever brand of camera you want to start out with and whatever your budget can stretch for you to afford moving right along so even though I recommend getting a zoom lens with the camera when you're first purchasing the camera, I would also recommend you get a prime lens, specifically the Nifty 50 prime lens, which is the 50 millimeter prime lens, typically at around f1.8. That will allow you to get some nice, crisp and amazing photos, especially at that 50 millimeter focal length, which is theoretically our eyes focal length and also the f1.8 will allow you to get a very shallow depth of field in your photos and videos if you want to shoot videos and give you some nice bucket in the background of your photos and also allows you to use high shutter speeds because opening up your aperture down to f1.8 will allow a good amount of light to enter through your lens and go on your sensor which will give your image enough lighting to have the right exposure compared to using a higher f-stops like f10 where everything is in focus but very little light is coming into your sensor so an f1.8 would be ideal for those portrait shots candid shots where you want to have some bucket in the background of your photos compared to a landscape shot which you would use a zoom lens like the 14 to 45 and you would put your f-stop to about f10 f15 so you can have majority of what is in the photo in focus the next purchase you want to make whenever you get your camera to start your photography journey is extra batteries i'd recommend getting at least two batteries for your camera when you're just starting out to take photos because you don't want to depend on one battery and then that battery die and you miss that perfect shot on your shoot or you're taking photos for someone on your battery die and then you will be quite disappointed because you would say what if i could get some amazing shots if i had an extra battery or some juice on my other battery so getting extra batteries are key when starting out your photography journey the next vital item on the list in starting your photography journey is storage now when taking photos you will need both sd cards these little tiny thing right here yeah sd cards so you can take your photos in your camera and store them to something while taking photos yeah your camera won't come with internal storage i am sure you guys know that by now but i'm just saying so there are a lot of brands out there to choose from when getting sd cards for your camera so you can store your photos while on the go i would recommend though getting an sd card with a pretty decent write read and write speed typically around 150 to 300 megabits per second even though the faster the read write speed the more expensive the card will be like this sand disk right here i think like this sand disk 64 gig extreme pro right here i think it cost me around 20 to 30 dollars and it writes 170 megabits per second 
put this Lexar right here, this is also a 64 gig. It's 95 megabits per second and I think this is around $20. So try to get an SD card between 150 to 300 megabits per second and about 64, 128 gigabytes of storage. So you can always have redundant storage so you can never miss that shot. And also try to have more than one SD card just in case one fills up or one of them just surprisingly stops working. Always have more than one SD cards. And as I mentioned earlier, you need external storage to back up your files so you don't have to depend on the storage built into your laptop or PC or MacBook or whichever device you have to edit and store your photos. Always have an external storage device to store and back up your photos in the event that you lose the storage or files on your PC or MacBook you will always have them backed up on an external source so you can always go there to get them. I prefer Samsung's T5 external SSDs. SSDs are really fast even though they're expensive but they get the job done, they're durable, very fast, sturdy and yeah the Samsung T5 is amazing and I use the Western Digital. This is a 2TB hard drive which I got from Amazon. I'll leave the link to everything I'm talking about here in the description so you don't have to worry. Also for my hard drives, I try to keep them safe so I always buy pouches for my stuff so they are always protected and safe and I don't run the risk of having them damaged. Moving right along. Yes guys, so the next item on the list is this monstrosity right here, which is called a tripod. Now tripods come in a wide range of size, length and brands, materials and so on and so forth. This one right here is a Sears aluminum frame tripod and it extends really tall. I think it goes up to 65 inches in height and it's very sturdy. This is the first tripod I got since I started photography back in 2018 and it's been serving me quite well since. Now a tripod is very useful for like landscape photography. You're shooting those long exposure shots and you want to keep your camera very stable so you can use that low shutter speed. Also it's quite usable for like wedding shoots, portraits and a lot of other type of photography techniques. It's all up to you and what you want to use your tripod to do. If you want your hands to rest while you continue taking photos, you can always put your camera on the tripod and continue shooting. And also you can use a tripod if you want to keep the camera in one specific location and shoot multiple persons in that same location. You can keep the camera on the tripod so it's always in that exact spot. So all you will need to do is tell your talents where to go, how to pose, and the camera will always be in the same spot, location, so all the photos will be consistent. Next on the list is a camera bag. Now this is a very vital equipment for protecting your camera and also transporting your camera, lenses, batteries and other equipment which you will take whenever you're taking photos. For me personally, I have this amazing camera bag right here. I recently got it. It's the Mosiso camera bag and it also has space to hold my 17 inch laptop. Now here it is. I will show some b-rolls of it. Meanwhile, this video is playing. I hope I remember to. Before the Mosiso, I had the Ultimax, this little bad boy right here. It has been serving me for the past three years until I got the Mosiso. So whenever I'm doing like a regular photo shoot and I don't need much equipment with me, I would carry this one right here. It will host all my lenses, my flash, my camera, storage, and maybe a little extra accessories. And it performed quite well. It's weather resistant, I think. And yeah, it's quite comfortable and it was very affordable. I also had this Targos laptop bag which I used to bring with me on my shoots but it's, a, it's pretty beaten up now. This one is fully weather sealed. It comes with a raincoat built onto it and it could also hold my laptop which is a 17 inch laptop so not many bags, camera bags can do that. So this served me very well. I love this bag. Even though it was a bit tight on the room side because it's 
bit flat compared to the Mosiso, so it didn't have enough room to extend to hold all my stuff. Next on the list, this is kind of optional, it depends on what kind of photographer you are, but the next item I have on the list is speed light or a flash system. For me personally, I shoot Panasonic full time, so I use the Godox X2T O version, which means this flash is compatible with Olympus and Panasonic cameras. Please ensure that when you're buying a camera and then you're buying your trigger or flash system for your camera, you choose a trigger that is compatible with your camera brand because each trigger is unique to its camera. So this is O for Olympus and Panasonic, Nikon would be N, Canon would be C and Sony would be S. So please bear that in mind when you're taking up a trigger or transmitter for your flash system. Now this trigger is what sends a signal to this flash right here wirelessly to tell it to flash whenever you're taking a photo. And you can also adjust the settings of the flash right here using this trigger, like the intensity of the flash and so on and so forth. Now this flash right here, this is the Godox TT600. Now this flash is very unique because it's affordable, that's one, and it can also be placed directly onto your camera. So technically you don't really need this if you're gonna use this flash unless you plan to mount this flash in a specific location while you move about the place. If you're gonna have this flash on like a stand with a softbox, then you would need this to trigger this if it's further away from you. But if you're gonna walk around with the flash on the camera, you can always just slap this onto the camera and put it in slave mode to take flash photos. But as I said, it's optional. You don't have to start with flash photography. Right in the beginning, you can take your time to go deeper and deeper into photography when you're just beginning. Flash photography is a trial and error and takes some time to get used to. So a quick demonstration, the trigger would look like this on the camera. So it would be up here on the top in the hot shoe mount of the camera and you would just slide this right here. It would fit in perfectly, then you lock it into place like a Lego, perfect. It just snaps right into place and this is the trigger. And then it would send a signal to this if this is maybe at another point when you're taking the photos and press the shutter button right here and the trigger will snap. Let me do a quick demonstration. Turn on the trigger, turn on the flash and this is the trigger. I have the flash, I'm not pressing anything. Watch this, just like that. So this is sending a signal to this so it flashes and it will flash simultaneously when you take a photo. But as I said, Flash photography is a bit technical, so if you guys want to know more about flash photography, you can subscribe to my channel and I will talk about flash photography in another video in more detail so you can have a full understanding of how flash photography works. But it's optional. You don't need a flash system when you're just starting out as a photographer. And as I mentioned before, this would be the other way where you can mount the flash directly to the camera. So you can be shooting, taking photos, and the flash is already placed on the camera for like if you want to take someone directly in front of you and you don't want to get too technical with your flash and lighting. Now the final thing I want to discuss on this list is photo editing software or application. This is the post-processing process after you've taken your photos to help enhance your photos or do the finishing touches before you have your end results. Now, a few software or applications you can use to post-process or edit your photos are Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, Darktable, Luminar, and Capture One. I personally I am a full-time user of Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. Creative Cloud versions because they've been very reliable, professional, and efficient for me and my workflow over the years and I don't see any reason for me to venture into another software. I am free to try another software if 
I see an opportunity arise, but for now, I am comfortable with using Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. I've tried Darktable in the past. It's free, I don't, I'm not sure if it's still free, but it was free back when I tried it. And Darktable is pretty similar to Lightroom. The setup, the UI, the way it functions, it's almost identical to Adobe Lightroom. That's Darktable. Um, there's also an amazing software on the market currently which uses artificial intelligence to enhance your photos and makes the editing process pretty easy and that is Luminar. And I've also heard some colleagues of mine and friends who are into the photography realm as well that use Capture One and they say it's an amazing software. So those are a few softwares that you can try whenever you want to start your photography journey. Please bear in mind though that Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, Luminar and Capture One I think are paid software but they are very affordable. I think Adobe Lightroom is $10 per month for subscription. And as I mentioned before, I think Darktable is free because when I was using it back in the past, it was free. I'm not sure if it is. If it is, I will leave some word in here that is stating that Darktable is still free. And I will also attach a link to Darktable website in the description. I'll also attach a link to all the software I just mentioned in a link in the description. Now, if you've made it to this section of the video, guys, a sub to the channel would be amazing. And also hit that like button to help me push through with the algorithm. I'm Shabon Beckford and do stick around for more videos, which will help you to start your photography journey and also your video journey with tips and tricks and a lot more in the future. And you can also check out my previous videos that I've posted on this channel. I'm Shabon Beckford and I'm signing out.